an honor and a total delight that we get to be with you today. Do you know that when you woke up this morning, God was like, good, she's awake, good. He's, oh, his eyes are open, we can have some fun, we can go and talk. God is absolutely crazy in love with you. I mean, absolutely, undescribably crazy in love with you. And you know, the thing is this, you may not know some of the magnitude of his love for you, but I want to encourage you that one of the ways you can walk into and start to begin to experience God's love for you is by asking Jesus to come into your heart. And you know, that's a very important thing. That's the beginning of a relationship by saying, yeah, reaching out and him reaching out to you and saying, yes, let's start this relationship. And I want to encourage each person watching right now, I want you to say a prayer with me. Just repeat this after me. We're going to ask Jesus to come into our hearts, come into our lives so that we can begin to experience, understand and know some of the magnitude of God's love for us. So let's just pray this right now. Say this after me, dear Jesus, thank you for dying on the cross. I'm sorry for the wrong things that I've done, but I ask you to please come into my heart. Jesus be my Lord and savior from this moment for the rest of eternity in Jesus name. Amen. You know, that prayer can literally change your whole life. And I know my mom says this. She says, I prayed this prayer, you know, I want to say like 60 years ago. And she said, that prayer continues to work in my life every day. And it's true. That prayer has potential and power to change your life on an ongoing basis, day by day. I want to encourage you, if that's the first time you pray that, or maybe you're kind of making a recommitment to Jesus or restarting up a relationship with him, that's fantastic. I want to applaud you and say, excellent, way to go, fantastic choice. But I want to encourage you as well, when you start a relationship with anybody, you can't just reach out, shake their hand and say, okay, now I know them. You kind of have to do some things to develop and cultivate the relationship. And some of the ways you do that with Jesus, I'd encourage you, maybe get a hold of a Bible and read a chapter every day and starting in the book of Matthew. Do some praying every day. Get involved in a good Bible teaching church. Those are great ways, ABCs, praying, Bible, church, great ways for you to develop and cultivate your walk with Jesus. Another great way for you to cultivate your walk with Jesus is to watch a teaching that mom is going to be giving you now called Love is Brokenness. And the truth of it is, it's the love of God that draws us to himself. He loves you deeply. That's why you're interested in him is because he loves you. He cares for you. And the fact that you're interested in him is reason, a desire that he's put in your heart because he wants to connect with you. So I want you to watch this teaching. And remember, if you have any need in your life, we would love to pray for you. Get on our website, leave your prayer request there or drop us a line in the mail. But we love to pray for you. And we know that God does tremendous things. So in a few minutes, you'll see mom is gonna be teaching on love is brokenness. Now I want you to pay very close attention to this because at the end of her teaching, she's going to give a testimony about a woman whose life was completely, completely revolutionized. This woman went through some very difficult things, very difficult things with her family and, and very difficult situation, difficult circumstance. But I want you to watch this teaching because this testimony, especially at the end, will encourage you on how God can do absolutely amazing things through his love, how he can turn a situation and what the devil meant for evil, God can turn it and use for good. So I want you to watch this teaching and remember this, it's important, put your remote control down, call a friend, say, hey, Marilyn's teaching, you wanna get on the, on the TV, watch now, because God is going to supernaturally encourage you, strengthen you and show you his love in ways you've never known before. And again, watch carefully for the testimony at the end because it will encourage you that there is absolutely nothing impossible for God, that he can change the worst circumstances and turn them into good. Paul, he's always saying, I'm a slave of the Lord Jesus Christ. He doesn't just say, I'm a servant. A servant gets paid. Just make me a slave. I'm a slave of Jesus. If Jesus says, go across the street and witness to your neighbors who swear all the time and are beating their kids and, and the police are always there, I'll go. If they throw me out, then throw me out. I'm a slave. Everybody say, I'm a slave. 
And see, broken love says, just make me a slave. Don't, don't, I'm not looking to be a hot shot. I'm not looking for my name. It's not my name is going to cut it anyway. It's whose name? His name. That is so key. Make me like one of your hard servants. That's all I want to be. Just make me. Everybody say, make me. And, you know, I thought, Lord, there are a lot of people here and around in this time in America who don't have jobs, Christians. How many of you here need a job? You need a job. Stand up. I feel led to pray for you. Television audience, I, I feel led to pray for you. Stand up. You need a job. Now, listen, I'm going to pray for your job, but I'm going to pray that you're the best employee they've ever had. That when you get that job, I mean, they got a gold mine in you. They've never had a better one. Are you ready? Are you ready? Because he's going to make you the best. Everyone extend your hand toward everyone that's standing. Say, Father, you have the best jobs. You are the best. This morning, we call in jobs for 70 or 80 people here. In October, this outstanding month, we call in the best jobs in Jesus' name. Now, Father, make me the best employee, the best. I'm a gold mine. Woo, people fight to get me to work for them. I never talk against the boss. I don't listen to talk. I don't steal. I don't leave early. I overproduce. I thank you, Lord. I'm a gold mine in the making. Make me like you. Amen. You can be seated. Woo. Just make me the best. And I'll be very interested in hearing about all the jobs that come in in October. Let's look at the Father's love. The Son now has broken love. Broken love sees clearly. Selfish love does not see clearly because selfish love always is victim. But broken love says he can take the worst thing and make it work for good. Is Romans 8, 28 in the Bible? That he makes all things work together for good to them that love God and are the called according to his purpose? Is that in the Bible? Is it for you or just everybody else? Is it? Can he make the worst things work for good? Look at someone say, honey, that scripture's for you. Amen. Now let's watch the Father. The Son has broken love. Ooh. But look at the Father. The Father sees him afar off. And what does he do? It says in here, but when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. I don't imagine he smelled very good. If you hang around pigs, you don't smell good. And you've been out begging and living, I mean, you probably look like trash. And you're coming back and you spend it all and you want the father to die early and so you ask for your inheritance. I mean, you really blown it big time. But look at the father. The father had what kind of love? Come on, tell me. Broken love. And the father saw him afar off. Why? He was looking. Everybody say he was looking. Do you know God is looking for you this morning? Do you know he's looking for you? Just one little step toward him. He's running toward you. He sees you coming. Everybody say, he sees me coming. Why? Because he has broken love. And when he sees him, he runs toward him, and he has compassion. I looked up compassion one time, a long time ago, and it says that his innards moved in him. You know that feeling when all your emotions just go bananas. Oh. And you know he cried and cried and kissed him and kissed him fell on his neck. This is my son. Oh, my goodness. I got him back. And what did he do? Did he say, well, I hope you've learned your lesson, you idiot, you. Got a few things to get settled here. But the son's so broken, there's not much to settle. And it said he gave him shoes and a robe and a ring. And this ring is the ring you stamp to show that you have authority gave it back to him. What on earth? 
That son got double portion. He spent one portion and got another one because the father's love is so broken. And the father's love will never fail you. People will fail you. I'll fail you. But God's love never fails. Everybody say, God's love never fails. He's waiting for you. What for? Well, you say, I've blown it. Okay. But he's got a ring and shoes and a robe for those who have failed. But you have to come back. You have to rise and come back. Everybody say, get up and come back. Now, the son says to him, of course, make me. I've sinned against heaven. I've sinned against you. Just make me. But then we've got another person here in this story. We've got the elder son. Because the father kills the fatted calf, has a big party. And we all like parties, right? We love parties. Basically, we're born party people. We like them. I like parties. I like to have them at my house. I like to go to somebody else's house. I just like parties. And so the father has a party, kills the fatted calf. Everybody comes, and he says, this my son who was dead is alive. Well, you say he wasn't physically dead, but he was dead to the father's love. Now he's alive to the father's love. God's love makes you alive and keeps you alive. Everybody say, God's love makes you alive and keeps you alive. And so he's having a party. They're celebrating. The, the son was dead, but he's alive. And now the elder son, <laughs> he doesn't have broken love. He's got selfish love. And look what he says. Lo, so he answers to his father, Lo, these many years I've been serving you. I've never tra transgressed your commandment at any time. You never gave me a young goat that I might make merry with, this, with my friends. But as soon as this son of yours came, who has devoured your livelihood with harlots, you killed the catted fat, uh, fat, I'm sorry, you killed the fatted calf for him. What is this? Is this selfish love or broken love? Do you ever feel like this? Have you ever seen some people grow in spiritual things that you've wanted and they're a new convert and they got revelation that you don't have? Do you ever get mad at God? Well, you know, I've read the Bible for years. How come you give a new convert that revelation? Slap him. No, no, no. God said, everything I ever had was always yours, Marilyn. You just never asked for it. And so he says to the son, all I ever had was always yours. And frankly, let's go back to the beginning. The father divided the living among them. Did the elder son have as much as the younger? Could he have had a party any time? And he said, all I ever had was yours. It was always yours. Everybody say, the Father's love is always mine. But the Son is playing victim and playing give me because he has selfish love. And I fight with selfish love. I fight, I fight with give me's. And I fight sometimes with make me's because I don't know if I want him to make me all of that. But oh, it so pays because love is so powerful. You need to go to Johannesburg, South Africa with Sarah and me for the most blessed time of your life to minister. It will be so awesome and you can get your brochure today. Is that right? That's right. Call or get on the website for the information. And we have an additional opportunity, yes. Mom, uh, for an excursion to Cape Town to see a safari as well as Robbins Island where Nelson Mandela was. Um, absolutely amazing things that are in Cape Town, that's an additional excursion. But the primary thing we want to encourage you with here is our ministry opportunities in Johannesburg. We're going to be ministering at nighttime as well as a Saving Moses opportunity. This is a life-changing trip and you don't want to miss out. Mom, how can they come? They can come and get the brochure, but you could also scholarship someone to go and a group of you could get together and scholarship your pastor and totally bless him and change his life. We want to hear from you today.
that's the end of the story. So you say, well, God doesn't tell us the end, so I'm going to give you the end. You say you're going to make it up. Yeah, I am. I'll tell you what I think happened. This is what I think. I think the elder son was so touched by the father's love. Oh, son, come on. Everything I have is yours. Come into the party. This is your brother. Because he didn't even call him his brother. He said, your son, not my brother. This your brother. He's dead. He's alive. Come on, let's have a party and let's celebrate as a family that we love each other. We have an unbroken love in our family. So they went in, I think, and they had a party. I think the elder son hugged the younger brother. The younger brother hugged him, and they had a party. But I can see how they worked very hard on their father's farm. And maybe one night, you know, one of the younger son is out working late at night. And I don't know if they even use tractors anymore, but he's out on a tractor, and the lights are on, and somebody drives by and said, what are you doing? You're out working. It's 10 o'clock at night. Does your father make you work so late? Oh, no. Don't you know my story? My father gave me my inheritance, and I spent it all. And when I came back, he gave it all back to me. How could I do too much with such love like this? And how, how can we not spend ourselves totally for such love like this? Everybody say, make me. And I want to share something that happened right here in our city. Her name, she's passed away now, was Hoshula Hannah. She came to our Bible school, and she told me that she had a daughter who was in another Bible school who was studying to be a missionary, 36-year-old daughter, lived at home. And the daughter was murdered. Uh, some guy, and at that time in Denver, there, we had a serial killer who was killing women, and he killed her daughter, Pat. Hashula was so bitter. Her whole life was, get him, get him, make him suffer. He killed my daughter. She was going to be a missionary. And of course, she was mad at God, too. She's a big victim. And they caught him. He was trying to kill a woman in a shopping center, broad daylight. I think he killed four women in Denver. And she was so glad. They got him. They got him. He deserves to die. Be miserable. And it was a Saturday night, and she was going to church the next morning, and they had a Gideon who was speaking, and she knew this. And the Lord said to her, If you don't forgive him, I can't forgive you. Oh, God, how can I forgive him? And God said, Because I forgive you. Wow, unconditional love. So the Lord gave her a plan. She said, okay, I'll, I'll speak by faith. I'll forgive him. Make me like you, Father. She went to the service, and she saw the Gideon afterwards, and she said, I have a gift for Bibles. Gideons, you know, raise money for Bibles and give Bibles up. But she said, my gift has a string on it. She said, you have to take one of the Bibles personally to this man in Canyon City who murdered my daughter. And you have to say to him personally, the mother of Pat that you murdered sends this Bible to you and says she forgives you and she loves you, and if you will give your life to Jesus, he loves you, he will give you a new beginning. That Gideon was so touched by that, such broken love, that he himself went to the prison, went to Canyon City. I know this is all a true story. Everybody say, true story. And he got to see the man, and the man was the most violent prisoner Canyon City said they ever had at that time. But they let him out, or let him come, you know, have uh, time with him. And so he gave him the Bible, but he said to him the words that Hashula asked him to say. Hashula, the mother of Pat, said to tell you uh, that you killed her, her daughter, Pat, and that she has forgiven you and that she loves you and that Jesus loves you. And we'll forgive you if you give your life to him and has a wonderful plan for your life. And when this Gideon said these words to this man, listen, he fell on the floor and said, no one in my life ever said they loved me. And he received Jesus as his Savior. He was so changed 
They literally made him a chaplain in the prison. They gave him an extra cell to counsel and pray with men. And the Gideons got him out one night for a banquet in Pueblo to give his testimony. And this is what Hashula said to me. She said, Marilyn, God wanted my daughter to be a missionary, and the devil killed her. But she said, when I forgave her murder, she said, God took the murder and made him a missionary in a place she could never go. That's the power of God's love. 1 Corinthians 13 says, and we like this chapter, Though I speak with the tongues of men and angels, and have not love, I am like sounding brass and a clanging cymbal. And though I have the gift of prophecy and understand all mysteries and have all knowledge, and though I have all faith so that I could remove mountains, and I don't have love, I'm nothing. And though I bestow all my goods to feed the poor, give my body to be burned, and have not love, it profits me nothing. Everybody say, God's love is profitable. Love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy. Love does not parade itself. Love is not puffed up. Love does not behave itself rudely. Love does not seek its own. Love is not provoked. Love thinks no evil. Love does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the truth. Love never fails. Say that with me. Love never fails. But where there are prophecies, they'll fail. Tongues will cease. Knowledge, you think you're so smart, it's going to vanish away. For we know in part and we prophesy in part. But when that which is perfect is come, that which is in part will be done away. When I was a child, selfish love, I spoke as a child, I understood as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. Now we see through a glass dimly, but then face to face. Now I, then I shall know as I am known. Do you realize how well Jesus knows you? He knows the number of hairs on your head. He knows when you brushed it this morning and Pat lost one. <laughs> he counts them. He knows your thoughts before you think them. And it says, I'm going to know him that well? Oh. And then it says, and this is the real ringer, the real ringer. Now abideth faith, hope, and love. That's the threefold cord. Ecclesiastes says the threefold cord is not easily broken. If you will walk in faith, if you will keep your hope in him, and that's what happened in this whole account, and you will know that his love is the greatest of all. I'm telling you, you can't do it. Amen? Emotional issues are so challenging. You can have struggles with depression. You can have struggles with fear, anxiety, frustration, worry. There's all kinds. There's a whole spectrum of emotional issues that challenge us and that we have to deal with. And I want to encourage you today that you do not have to be controlled by your emotions, that God can absolutely come and bring peace into your heart, can bring uh, uh, joy where there's been depression, can bring uh, serenity where there's been anxiety. God can absolutely replace all of the negative stuff and replace it with who He is and what He does, the fruit of the Spirit. I want to encourage you, get on the phone right now. Call because we want to pray for you that God will help you with your emotions, not to be controlled by them, but to see His power overcome and also replace to replace the bad with the good. So get on the phone or get on the website. And I want to encourage you with this. Remember that David always said, why so downcast, O oh my soul, put your trust in God. And so many times I've said that to myself, Sarah, why are you upset? Why are you discouraged? Why are you nervous? Why are you frustrated? Why are you afraid? And sometimes we get afraid of the future. We get fearful of this situation. We get nervous about this. We worry about what hasn't happened, all kinds of things. But I want to encourage you today that God says to you, why so downcast? Oh, my soul, put your trust in God. 
And you and I both know that trusting in God is the best solution, the best solution for emotional struggle. So I encourage you today, get on the phone. Let us pray for you. Let us pray for those emotional needs that you have. If you can't get to the phone, then get on the website. We want to pray for you to see God turn what's been a struggle, what's been a difficulty, what's been a hardship, even what's been a failure for you in your emotional life. Turn that into his victory, into his peace, into his joy, into his strength, into his power. So let us pray for you. It's a tremendous privilege and an honor and a transformation for you even today. Emotional suffering can take many forms. Some people battle fear. Others carry the wounds of emotional abuse, grief, rejection, disappointment, betrayal, and even abandonment. But here's the amazing news. Jesus provided for healing and wholeness in our emotions on the cross, just as he provided for our physical healing. You just have to know how to appropriate it. Mom has a teaching that really unpacks this truth in a clear and powerful way. It is called wholehearted and for a limited time, it is our thank you gift to you for your gift of any amount to this ministry. Here's more information on how to share a gift and receive this great resource in your life for healing emotions. Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. These powerful words are found in Isaiah 53 and make it clear that Jesus' redeeming healing work on the cross included healing for our emotions. For a limited time, you can receive Marilyn's teaching on healing for your emotions as our special thank you for sharing a gift of any size. It will help you understand how to appropriate healing for your emotions and to walk in wholeness and peace. But if you can share a seed gift of $53 or more in support of the outreaches of Marilyn Hickey Ministries, we want to send you a powerful bundle of resources. We're calling our First Aid Kit for Your Emotions. This kit includes the powerful soft cover book, God's Prescription for a Hurting Heart. The two CD set titled Wholehearted, Keys for Emotional Healing and Prosperity for Your Soul, plus a bottle of anointing oil for your ministering this kind of healing to yourself and to those you love. So an Isaiah 53 seed gift right now and receive your own first aid kit for your emotions. Call or click right now. Share online at marilynandsarah.org. Walk in wholeness in your emotions and prosperity in your soul. Call today. 